Hello, hello again, everybody. How are you doing? It's a new wrestling show I just got from two of my favorite wrestlers on uh, NXT and doing big cast. Zach and Zach is here with the attack line for this Monday, September 21st, 2015. I've ever had a great weekend. I did have a lot of gigs, four gigs, to end my summer series of shows. Since it's almost officially the end of summer, I thought today was the first day of fall, but it's Wednesday. But I ended my summer tour with four gigs. One on Friday, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Friday, special needs dance at the Washington Senior Center. I haven't done a special needs dance in two months. So, I was looking forward to this one. It was a decent show. It was another fun show. The attendance has been fluctuating. But I've always noticed about special needs. I've said this a lot about them out here. That no matter who shows up and no matter how many people show up, they come to have fun. Because it's the only time they can come once a month and have a great time. And I provide it. I feel honored to do these dances because it's so much fun to do. Especially with this being Disney themed with uh, a person coming in dressed up as Princess Princess Anna from Frozen. Play some Frozen songs, some other Disney songs. Mixed in with the typical songs I play at the special dances like Cha Cha Slide, Cooper Shuffle, Uptown Funk, all that great stuff. I had everyone having a ball like usual. You know, I've done these for like four or five years now, and it's still fun to do. No matter the attendance. You know, they all come to have a good time. Best one in a while, I'll say that much. Best special needs in a while. So there you go. Besides that, two gigs on Saturday. First gig was at Westview Orchards. First of two I did for them this weekend. Saturday and Sunday last week. The 12th and 13th, Saturday sucked, Sunday rocked. Almost the same this week. Saturday, not as bad as last week. Uh, this past Saturday, but, uh, it rained in the morning. And, but it got better in the af like afternoon, it got better. But there was still some overcast clouds, but it rained most of the, the rest of the day. So, it was an improvement. Very big improvement on the previous Saturday. But it was windy. It was hot and windy. It was like 70 and windy though. Very high winds on Saturday. Not as much wind on Sunday. So Saturday, windy but sunny. Easy attendance. Better than last week for sure. Still not a peak of attendance on a Saturday yet. But still fun DJ in the fall. No matter what day, no matter the weather. Especially when it was good on Sunday. Then my second gig on Saturday. Uh, on Monday I talked about this gig being a private gig. Well, I didn't want to disclose it. It was a surprise party. Because it was for Karen Poya, a friend of Mary Morellens, one of my most loyal and most favorite customers. I didn't want to say anything because she watches these videos sometimes. So, Mary, if you're watching, hello. So, I didn't want to spoil anything. It was, a, it was at her house. She was planning it along with her husband, Walt, her being Karen's husband, Walt, who we surprised last year. And they're welcome for me not spoiling anything on here or on Facebook. Because I'm bad with secrets, usually, but I've been good with them lately. Especially not posting anything about this party on here or on Facebook. And it was Karen's 50th party, and it was excellent. Uh, it took a while to get going, though, because the crowd was different. Various crowds at her Halloween parties, which I have done for the last seven years. Taking this year off, though, uh, a lot more, but like, probably in the 40s, 40s and 50s, you know. But Karen's crowd, a lot more older folks, you know, older than 40. It took a long time for them to get going, long, took longer for them to get drunk than when Mary's party at her Halloween parties. But it was still fun. I played some new stuff early. Now let me enough time to play some disco, some old school rap. Then I kind of played that 80s block party last week, which was awesome. So I took some of those ideas into this show. Some worked, some didn't. Super Sonic work, it takes two. They didn't work as much as I thought it was going to do. But like, you know, disco worked, some funk worked. You know, towards the end of the night, like the last hour was awesome. That's when people were really dancing and they were really drunk for like the last hour or so of the party. So it was, that was excellent on Saturday night. Then of course the last show, the summer tour was the second show at Westview for the weekend. On Sunday, like I kind of said earlier, 
But rather, it was sunny, no wind. A lot more attendance than the previous Sunday. And it was a great way to end. I always like ending my tours at rest because it's just a fun day. A lot of great audience, especially when it's good weather like it was yesterday. So, uh, I love DJ. They have 30 Mile and Van Dyke. They have the corn maze and stuff. You pick apples. and They have a grill on the hill in the back where you have to pay to get in that area. So, I'm glad they put up a grill at the Milk House Cafe across from me in the cider board. That you don't have to pay entrance to. And, of course, the winery is doing well, too. So, great weekend this past weekend to end my summer tours schedule. Got some new tours back to school. Tech and holidays both start this week. Football game. First football game in about a month. White Star game for Romeo High against Lions Cruz. Saturday, back in Westview again. Also on Sunday. And also Saturday, DJ Wiley Hells are home. Their usual fall event. They moved it from the third Saturday to the fourth Saturday of September. Cannot wait for that. Biker party. Now on to the TV news for the weekend. Starting with number ones. First, number one movie. After two weeks. Actually, one week, actually. The perfect guy got kicked off by... Maze Runner! The sequel, The Scorch Trials, landed up more than $30 million in the first week. Well, Johnny Depp's movie wasn't exactly a bomb like usual. Still made the present $22 million. You know, Black Mass, at least it made more than $5 million like his previous, unlike his previous movies. He had some, also some limited releases as well, some IMAX only releases that made some good impact. You can see what happens this week with, uh, the only big movies coming out this week that could take over. It's like Green Inferno, some new stupid horror movie. Sis Sicario, Nick's my expansion, and the intern with Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro and Ho Hotel Transylvania 2. I bet you the anime movie will win. Not much family movies that I want to do, so I bet you that one could do well in the box office. A lot of horror movies and thrillers top dominating the charts. So there you go. Maze Runner, new number one movie. Now, Billboard number ones. Well, another great week for the weekend. First things first, third week in the war, number one on the album charts with Beauty Behind the Madness on the top 200. And he's number one still on the Billboard Hot 100. Here's the catch. He kicked himself off. The first artist to do so since Taylor Swift kicked herself off with Blake's face, kicked off, shake it off. Now, The Hills... At number two last week, kicked off, I Can't Feel My Face to become the number one single. I hate the hills. I can't, feel, I can't Feel My Face is more catchy. The hills is droning. I hate it. It's like, ugh. But it's number one single. He, like I said, it's the first artist to do so since Taylor Swift replaced himself and the first male to replace himself on the Hot 100 since T.I. did it. When Live Your Life Kicked off whatever you like. That almost whined, didn't it? So again to the weekend for another great week. He is also the first artist, also since Swift, to dominate both the album and singles charts for multiple weeks. So again to the weekend for a great week yet again. Now unto some of the well the biggest news coming out of the weekend for Hollywood. TV! The Emmys took place last night, the primetime Emmys. I watched it on DVR because I was watching wrestling last night. The wrestling pay-per-view was on. So I was watching it on DVR. I love recording things on DVR, especially awards shows. So fast forward to the awards I don't care about, like the miniseries. I skipped all of them. Uh, first off, Andy Samberg. I didn't see his whole entire opening monologue. I liked the video in the beginning, the, the, the little Long Island digital short music video to begin the show. I, that was kind of funny. There was some good jokes in his monologue, like Bill Cosby jokes and Santa Davis joke, the controversial cook in Kentucky. I don't want to talk about it because I'm not a political person. I don't talk politics. I talk entertainment and pop culture. So it was good for the most part. 
But some of the jokes reminded me when I saw it in season sorry back in uh August of the Oddball Tour. I was watching I was only most of the same book set. I was like, I've never seen a comedian no more unfunny than in season sorry before. It's not like in season style. And he reminded me of that from some of the points. Because I remember seeing him on a roast as well of uh James Franco, the worst kind of reception roast ever. At least the Beaver Roast was awesome, made up for it. Uh, no one took two years for another roast. Because that Franco was so bad. There was people kissing ass more than roasting. And Andy was on there, he was not good on there. He was good on this, for the most part, the dialogue. Uh, some of the big moments, besides the winners. Uh, Tracy Morgan, making one of his first major public appearances since his almost career-threatening car crash about a year and a half ago when he suffered brain damage at a Walmart. And he looked great. He sounded great out there. and he, It's a good spirit. It's good to see him back on that stage again. So I had some interesting speeches that I didn't see. I just fast forward to some of it. I didn't see the whole entire show. Especially uh, Viola Davis's speech. I heard there was some mixed reception to that. Some people liked her speech. Some people didn't. Uh, she won for Best Actress in a lead in a drama series for uh, How to Get Away with Murder. And also, other big win, John Hamm finally wins the Emmy. The Susan Lucci of the Primetime Emmys, besides Amy Poehler, who will go her entire TV career winless at the Emmys. He finally won for Best Actor and got a standing ovation for it. But I heard his name, I was like, wow, he's never won, he finally won. So it was great to see him win that. Also, despite losing Best Series, Transparent won some awards, including Jeffy Tambor, winning lead actor. It was all to see first actor ever to play a transgender person win an award. The times, they are certainly a changing. But some things didn't change. A web series did not win Best Series. It was a TV series. Two channels were dominant in most of the categories. Comedy Central, Dominated some of the variety categories. With the variety series being split in variety talk series and variety chat series, uh, sketch series, gave more people a chance to shine. Daily Show still won in its final season, winning Best Variety Talk Show and Best Writing and Directing in its variety series and using John Stewart getting F'd by John Cena for its highlight wheel. That was funny. And also, Amy Schumer, yes! Inside Amy Schumer, deservingly winning Best Sketch Variety Series, leading fellow Comedy Central shows, Key and Peel, and a show I also like, Drunk History. Amy deserves it, man. I've seen her twice, and she's a terrific stand-up, and I love her show. She's one of the best stand-ups going today. She's smart and funny and good-looking. I know some people may think she's not hot, but to me, she's hot. You know? No matter. If you're a size B or a size D, Amy's awesome. But the other big winner is uh, The Voice, ending the reign of Amazing Race. That's what's happened. A lot of streaks. A lot of series who's won awards in the past, their streaks ended. The streak of Amazing Race ended with The Voice winning Best Variety Competition Series. I think they changed the Emmy voting system. They also factored the comedy categories. Drama, too. As HBO dominated the awards like they usually do, like in the past. With the comedy series categories dominated by Veep. Winning Best Writing for a Comedy Series. Tony Hale winning Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. I think Best Supporting Actress. Went to... Alice and Jenny for Mom. Well, Julia Lou Dreyfus once again reigns Supreme's best lead actress from a comedy series for Veep. And Veep ended the five year reign of Modern Family as Veep won best comedy series, beating out Transparent. I think a lot of people were thinking that would win because it won at the Golden Globes. And even if Modern's reign as best comedy series is over, I think people would say it should have ended earlier because Modern's not as good as it once was. I still watch it. Cannot wait for season seven premiere. On Wednesday, can't wait to see New Modern again. At least modern fans will know that the record at the Emmys is better than Golden Globes. We would 
will take a five and one record at the go at the Emmys, other than a one and five record at the Golden Gloves. And while Veep took over the comedy categories, Game of Thrones swept most of the drama categories, including overall best drama series. Other big wins for them, including I think they won best directing. Best writing for a drama series. And Peter Dinklage. He won Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series for his role as Tyrion, Tyrion Lannister. So that's cool to see him win. I've never seen. It's gonna win. I have HBO. I have a subscription to HBO. Now on HBO now, I read I currently subscribe to HBO. I don't watch it that much. Only for specials, because I'm watching Amy Schumer's special and U2 special. And sometimes my brother's girlfriend, when she comes over, she uses it to watch HBO movies. Mostly horror movies. So I don't watch that. Even though I have HBO, I can binge watch. I can binge watch. That's the good thing about having an HBO subscription, having every season of every HBO show. I can like binge watch, binge watch one day. But I may not do that. And also, I think a woman from a uh, Orange is the new black one. Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. With the Uzo Abduba winning for that show. The only major award won by a web show tonight. You know, the times are changing with more shows being on the internet. But one thing doesn't change. The fact that a real TV show won the Emmys for Best Series in Comedy and Drama. More importantly... Not a network, a paid premium cable network wins both major series awards. So, you know, congrats for all the winners, especially Amy Schumer. And that is it for the Act Live for today. Thank you very much for watching. With that in mind, you've been Act by the News from Zach. See you later, yeah.